Is the Nashville housing market finally crashing? There's tons of articles and tons of videos out there right now. Lots of clickbait on the market crashing and lots of doomsday predictions out there. So what we like to do here on this channel is take a look at the actual data and we're gonna check and see what we think is happening nationally and here in Nashville. So we're gonna take a look at a couple of articles on what's going on nationally with the housing market and then we're actually gonna take a look at our numbers in the MLS here in Nashville to see what's going on with our market here and see if in fact the market is crashing or if it's staying the same or if it's actually getting better. One of the things that we can always do is just to rely on the data. Really the true data will show us where the market is going. So it's important to just stay focused on those data points. So we're gonna take a look at some of those today for Nashville and nationally. Now, if this is your first time visiting my channel, my name is Jennifer Gramling and I'm a real estate agent here in the Nashville area. And I just put out content trying to get you more familiar with Nashville. If you're thinking about moving here or relocating, this could be a great channel for you. So be sure to subscribe so that you can keep up with these videos and the Nashville housing market. So let's go ahead and jump right into some of these newer articles that just came out. We'll take a look at them and see what we think about those. Okay, so this is actually a great article that just came out by Fortune Magazine. And it says the housing market correction takes an unexpected turn. Fortune has some great information out there. So let's take a look at what they have to say. The Federal Reserve has a simple inflation fighting playbook. It goes like this. Keep applying upward pressure on interest rates until business and consumer spending across the economy weakens and inflation recedes. So that was kind of the plan. So historically speaking, the Fed's inflation fighting playbook always delivers particularly hard hit to the U.S. housing market. When it comes to housing transaction, monthly payments are everything. And when mortgage rates spike, which happens as soon as the Fed goes after inflation, those payments spike for new borrowers. That explains why as soon as mortgage rates rose this spring, housing markets slipped into a housing cool down. But then they go on to say that the housing correction could soon lose some steam. So over the past week, mortgage rates have declined fast, which we're gonna see actually in the next article, they've actually even declined a little bit further even since this came out. It says as of Tuesday, average 30 year fixed mortgage sits at 5.5 down from June when mortgage rates peaked at 6.28. So that's a considerable drop. And then they say those falling mortgage rates give sideline home buyers immediate relief. And you know, the other people who are getting immediate relief right now are those buyers who were sitting on the sidelines since there is a little bit more inventory in the market right now. You've got some of those VA buyers, those FHA buyers, people who were, you know, having a harder time competing now are able to get back in the game. So I think that's also helping to spike some of these houses still being sold despite the higher prices is that people who couldn't previously buy before now are able to kind of get back in the game when they couldn't compete before. So this says those falling mortgage rates give sideline home buyers immediate relief. If a borrower in June took out a $500,000 mortgage at 6.28%, they pay $3,088 monthly in principal and interest. And at a 5.05% rate, that payment would just be $2,699. So over the course of 30 year loans, savings of $140,000. So that's a lot of savings and it's a lot of savings every single month. That's almost $400 a month and that can make a big difference in someone's budget. So they go on to talk about a lot of other really interesting data. I'm not gonna read the whole article to you, but I will link it in the comments so you can look it up and read it for yourself. They do go on to say, the bottom line is the recent decline in mortgage rates will help with the margin, but the housing market will remain under pressure with mortgage rates at 5%, fewer sales, slowing house price growth wrote Bill McBride, author of the economics blog Calculated Risk in his Tuesday newsletter. The reason even with one percentage point drop in mortgage rates, housing affordability remains historically low. If we include increase in house prices, payments are up more than 50% year over year on the same home, writes McBride. Then he goes on to say, if recession fears, which are helping to drive mortgage rates lower are correct, it would cause some additional weakening in the sector. If someone is afraid of losing their job, they're not going to jump into the housing market, which we kind of understand. So while lower rates by themselves are a positive for housing, that isn't the case when accompanied by a recession and quickly rising unemployment. So you've got this balance that's kind of going on with some people being able to jump into the housing market and some people stepping back which is causing that cooling effect. And then if we wanna take a look at what Forbes has to say, mortgage rates dip below 5% for the first time since April. So the average rate for the most popular type of mortgage in the US fell below 5% for the first time in four months, capping the biggest two week decline in 35 years. It says the national average rate for a 30 year fixed home loan dropped almost a third of a percentage point to 4.99 this week from 5.3%. 
Freddie Mac said in a report on Thursday, the average 15-year fixed dropped to 4.26, the lowest since April from 4.58. They said rates are tumbling as financial markets try to gauge whether the Federal Reserve's most aggressive monetary tightening in decades will cool inflation without sending the economy into a steep recession. And then they go on to say mortgage rates remain volatile due to the tug of war between inflationary pressures and a clear slowdown in economic growth, said Freddie Mac's chief economist. The high uncertainty surrounding inflation and other factors will likely cause rates to remain variable, especially as the Federal Reserve attempts to navigate the current economic environment. Again, not reading all of this, but they go on to say the decline in mortgage rates will be much needed support for home sales, which have retreated for five consecutive months, said Lawrence Yoon, chief economist for the National Association of Realtors. When rates are lower, more people qualify for mortgages and borrowers often qualify for larger loans because lenders compare monthly payments to income. Potential buyers who have been scared off by the rate spike might find their way back to the housing market, Yoon said. So as you know, one of the reasons that so many people backed off was this incredible spike in mortgage rates, along with inflation and just fear of what's going on in the economy. But now with one of those factors kind of going down, at least temporarily, it's going to give some people who are temporarily out of the game permission to kind of come back in and maybe get that same house that they were looking for. As we saw that payment coming back down, sometimes even in the neighborhood of four or $500 a month or more on a larger loan amount is going to put that back within reach for them. So those people may start jumping and buying some of those houses. So this recent reduction in those mortgage rates is going to be great because some people can get back into the game that were previously out of it. But also there's a lot more inventory on the market right now. So there's a lot more houses to choose from. So it's really, really a great time to be buying a house. Okay, so that's a little bit about what's going on with numbers nationally and mortgages and all those things that are kind of drivers of our real estate market here. So let's go ahead and let's take a look at the actual MLS and some of those numbers from last month and see if those prices are going up, if they're coming down and just see exactly what's going on in our market as of last month. Okay, so taking a look right here, this is gonna be for our entire MLS. So this is gonna be for all of Nashville, Davidson County and all of the surrounding suburbs. So let's take a look and see what some of these numbers are. So we're gonna start out with the median sales price. Again, a lot of people predicting that house prices are going to fall and that those numbers are gonna start coming down. So we've been watching that for the last couple of months to just kind of see what's been happening. But as of last month in June, it looks like our median home price was 367,000 and then again, in July, we're up to 371,000. So we're up about $4,000. So the median home price still going up and not dropping at least from June to July. Again, we'll have to check out August numbers as soon as August is finished, but at least from June to July, that median home price was still going up in our MLS. And another great indicator, things that we can look at, and as we've talked about, not to beat a dead horse, if you've watched a lot of these videos, then you know, but the months of supply, months of inventory of homes is a really big driver for home prices. And as you can see, this goes by months of inventory here. We're down to 2.2 months of inventory, 2.2 months of supply. Healthy balance market where you've got a balanced numbers of buyers and sellers is gonna be six months. So we are well below that. And that number has just been steadily coming down since it looks like July of 2020. So back in 2008, just to give you a refresher, uh, they were up to about 11 months of inventory. And that's why those prices were dropping so much was just because of that oversupply of houses. So when we see the months of inventory really starting to go up, really starting to spike, you can definitely expect to see those home prices start to drop. But from June to July, we went from 2.3 to 2.2 months of inventory. So those numbers still going down. Now this is something that's been kind of a really good thing, at least for all of my buyers. So as you can see, you know, up and down has kind of been the trend here as far as how many listings have been coming on the market. But after January, we started to come back up. We dipped again into April, but then as we went up into May and June, our new listings continued to rise, which is great. We did take another little dip here. So we went down just a handful of listings, but seeing this number of listings coming back up has been great because we have had such a lack of inventory, so many just not being able to have options of houses that buyers wanted to see. Some of those numbers have been coming up a little bit and getting a few more new listings on the market. It's really great to see that. And then if we want to go look at our days on market, that's another really great indicator. So as you can see, these numbers have just continued to decline. And this is our median days on market. So we've been kind of flat here at three days on market in the Nashville area for the last many, many months since October. Three. We finally went up 
to four days on the market median just this last in July. So if we go and look at average days on market, that's going to be at about 13. Again, it's just been declining, declining. But back in our pre-COVID market here, average days on market was about 33. And that was still considered to be a seller's market. So we've gotten into this place where we just think it's normal for houses to sell in two days. That's just not normal. That's not a healthy, normal market. So hopefully we'll start progressing a little bit back towards that a little bit. And that will give a little bit of relief to some of those buyers, you know, who were in such a rush and it's so hard to just make that snap decision in a day. You know, maybe they get a day or two to think about it. So, so yeah, if we look at average days on market, we were at 14 you know, we've kind of stayed flat here at 13, but still very much a seller's market. And as you can see with those numbers going up on that median home price, again, has the market peaked? You know, many people were thinking that we had reached the peak of the market months ago and that house prices were gonna start falling and that still has not happened yet. So again, it's still a great time to buy. It's still a great time to sell. Housing prices are still going up. You just need to make sure that you price that house accordingly because there is more competition on the market. So if you're pricing it at the very high end of the comps, still it's gonna sit for a minute. If you want it to move, you're gonna need to go ahead and price it really within the comps in order to get that to move. Okay, and let's go ahead and take a look at some of our more popular counties and just kind of break those down a little bit and see where they're falling as far as their numbers go. So if we wanna start out here in Williamson County, so in June, the median home price was 760, and again, that's gone up to 775. So that median home price still coming up a little bit and coming up about $15,000. Again, our months of supply still down at two months of supply. New listings came up a little bit in June, but then back down just slightly, only by like 100 listings into July. And then days on market, our median days on market is still going to be at three and then the average days on market is nine. So if you're still looking at one of those houses and it's priced appropriately, you maybe have about a week unless, you know, it's one of those really fabulous properties. I'm still seeing houses get multiple offers. If they're priced right and it's a really, really beautiful house, you may still be getting multiple offers on that. So you can't just sit back and think that that house is still gonna be there in nine days from now. If you like that house, you still need to go ahead and get that offer in. And let's take a look at Rutherford County. We're gonna go into Rutherford County now, which is more Murfreesboro, Smyrna, and some of those areas, Christiana. So their median home price in June was 388,000 and they're up to 395. So again, house price still going up. Months of supply, they're still dropping from 1.9 to 1.7. New listings there are up quite a bit. So just from April, you went from 87.92 listings up to 91.65. So that's a really good sign, really a little bit of relief for some of those buyers. And then days on market, we're still at three for median and eight days average. So those houses are still moving quickly. Even though there's more and more coming on the market, they're still moving quickly. And then let's pop over to Davidson County. So 420 was the median price up to 425. So still increasing there. Some months of supply still going down again, 2.2 to 2.1. New listings in Davidson County. Again, they had that little spike where they came up just slightly, just a couple hundred listings and then back down again. And then days on market, our median still at three with average being about 11. So all these numbers are pretty similar as far as days on market and things like that. The only really big difference is gonna be your median price point in some of these counties. And then last, we'll take a look at Wilson County here. We'll go take a look at their sales price. So in June was 426 and it's up to 430. So still increasing there. Your months of supply, Again, you've got this dramatic drop down to two months of inventory. New listings in Wilson County, look at this. I mean, they've had a dramatic increase, which is really, really great. So you've got an increase from almost 4,800 homes all the way up to 5,300 as far as new listings, but our month's supply still is still going down. So we're just starting to meet some of those buyer needs. People are just starting to finally get those homes that they've been looking for and been able to get in there, which is just fantastic. And then their days on market, if you look, their median still is three. Average has dropped down from 10 to nine. So that number also dropping. Kind of everywhere is about this same nine to 11 days average, three days median days on market. So still moving very quickly. So while we are seeing an increase in homes on the market, we're seeing an increase in inventory. Still those days on market are down. Still our inventory is down because those buyers are there. They're buying those houses still, even despite inflation, even despite some of these uncertainties, 
people are still buying. So it's always really eye-opening for me to actually take a look at these numbers and see what those numbers are saying to us, at least for these months. We don't have a crystal ball. We can't predict what's gonna happen next month. We can't predict what's going to happen with a lot of the different factors going on in the world right now. But what we can do is just look at where the numbers are right now. And as of right now, they're still looking pretty good. Obviously that can change. We're gonna keep our eye on that. Again, we'll check back with these numbers, uh, but hopefully those mortgage rates will start to continue to come down a little bit so that some people who still are really needing to buy have that opportunity to do so and take advantage of these lower mortgage rates. So we've also got some really cool and exciting new neighborhoods that are going in, new builds that are going to be released, especially in some of these high demand areas. So we're gonna start talking about some of those neighborhoods and new things that are coming on the market here in some upcoming videos. So be sure to stay tuned and look for those. And of course, again, if you need anything, if you have any questions at all, I'm a realtor here in the area, so be sure to reach out to me. You can find all my contact information in the comments. You can click the Calendly link and book a time with me to talk if that's easier. And we can set up a Zoom call and go over all of your questions. And if there's any videos at all that you wanna see, be sure to drop those in the comments. We'll try to get those taken care of and get those out there as well. So be sure if this video was helpful to you, be sure to like it, subscribe, and hit me up with any questions that you have. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you on the next video.